Um, and just before I start, I thought, well, I'll just give you a little bit of information about the group because you may not be aware of this, but we manage over 13,000 homes across Telford and Reakin, Shropshire and Staffordshire, and we employ over 1,200 people. So you can see we're a pretty big organisation. Um, we do provide homes mostly for rent, which includes retirement housing schemes for older and old um, customers. So, Reakin has been on a journey over the, the past three years with its um, EDI um, strategy, really kind of rejuvenating and refreshing our approach to EDI. Um, I mean, a lot of this came as a result of Black Lives Matters, but also the Grenville disaster that particularly impacted on the social housing sector and the terrible stigma that was associated with that. So it really kind of drove us to, to look at our um, approach over the last three years. And really, it was perfect timing when Sue and Sal approached us. Um, you know, the Covenant came at a really good time um, and the organisation, the Recognising Group, really sees it a very positive step that we signed up to the Covenant um, to really strengthen our approach to EDI in relation to our older and old LGBT customers, so it came at the right time. So, February last year, we signed up to the Covenant, we're pleased to say, um, and I just thought I'd just share some of the successes and challenges we've had. Um, it's great that we've we've um, really pleased to say that we've had a ho over a hundred care and support staff that have received the training from Sue and Sal, and it went down really well. We got really really positive feedback, which was excellent. Um, and we've actually got two members of staff within the Reakin Housing Group trained as facilitators, which again is really good, with the intention to roll it across the whole organisation. It is one part of the bigger. Um, whole for EDI, which I think a few people have mentioned before um, have spoke today. And it's fair to say that we have had quite a few challenges in trying to balance the pressure, because obviously we've got 1,200 staff, um, um, balancing the pressure to release training, to release them for training, um, for the SAN training, but also balancing that with delivering the day-to-day -day service. So we have had some tensions there. So what we decided as an organisation um, initially to do was to concentrate on more organisation-wide EDI training, which happened last year and, and, and this year, and that's for all staff across the organisation. And then the intention is over the next few years is to um, deliver more specific EDI training around sand and other strands of um, diversity and equality and inclusion too. Um, but it's fair to say that the Covenant's really important to it and it's very much part of our wider EDI um, message and commitment that we've got an, as an organisation. And I just thought it'd be useful today just to share a few examples of how we've integrated the Covenant within our organisation um, to really ra raise awareness amongst staff and residents of LGBT issues. So it's only just a few examples. Um, so firstly... We, we've, uh, we launched an LGBT employee network really to um, champion LGBT issues, raise awareness and, and support staff, and that was, that's been really well received. And as part of that, we've also got an allies network, which um, other staff within the organisation can show their support um, to um, the LGBT colleagues and more generally. And if they do sign up um, to be an ally, um, they get issued with these rainbow lanyards that they can wear, which is a really visible sign um, to show um, other members of staff and also residents that we come in contact with um, their support for the LGBT community. So that's gone down really well. So those are just a few examples of, of how we've been raising awareness internally with staff. Um, but in terms of raising awareness with residents, which is sometimes a more challenging thing to do, um, is that we've, we've held a number of um, awareness days um, on our retirement housing schemes um, and actually one involved um, residents watching the Pride, Pride film um, and it went down really, really well amongst residents. It was, it was really excellently received. Um, and there's just a few more photos there of other um, awareness events that we've had, um, uh, you know, across our schemes. I think I've got a few more there as well, but they're, they're, they've been well, really well received. So really, um, some of our challenges moving forward that we've identified as an organisation is really 
How do we represent inclusion externally? I mean, our website, when Sue and Sal looked at it, and we're the first to admit, there is, there is you know, it, it's across the whole EDI spectrum, though, really. Um, and as an organisation, we need to look at that in our marketing literature and look how we kind of um, represent inclusion externally. Um, but it's really important to make sure it's not tokenistic. Um, so there's a big piece of work going on at a, a more strategic level around that. So we need, that's one of our challenges moving forward um, I do feel we need to understand our customers for customers more as well to to better understand their needs um, in some of our retirement housing schemes we know our customers really well um, because we've got staff on site they're engaging with them daily um, and we've got the staff that are trained but with our more dispersed stock um, we do need to seek to understand our customers more living in our dispersed stock and make sure that staff are trained and they can challenge any, any inappropriate attitudes and behaviours, really. Um, and then, kind of finally, one of the key challenges that we've identified going forward, which is, it is one of the most challenging, probably, is how we, how we decide best to raise awareness amongst residents uh, of needs of, of LGBT residents living in our home, which I think is really challenging. Some of the awareness days have really helped. But I think there's a lot more work we need to do around that. And it's also, I've had conversations with Sue and Sal of, of you know, how best we, we, we do those things, really, because it can be challenging at times. Um, so, really, these are kind of the key areas. And this, by, you know, there's quite a bit to, to do there that we, 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 we got to do, and they're not always easy ones. But this is going to be our focus moving forward as the things that, 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 that we need to do. Um, and I'm sure we'll be in, in conversation with Sue and Sal and many others of you that could probably um, share, share some good practice around that. Um, so, just finally, just to summarise, um, for the Reekin Housing Group, the, the Sand Covenant does fit in very well with our um, EDI strategy. Um, it is one of many strands of our strategy, and I think you've heard today some of the challenges that we've had in, in actually implementing all of it, um, whilst balancing it with delivering the day-to-day -day service. But the Covenant is, is integral to our EDI strategy and the EDI, EDI strategy action plan. Um, and I hope today you've demonstrated that although we've got a lot more work to do, that we have made some good progress and, and, and we, you know, will continue to do so.